50 series reviews are coming out. The US government is restricting Nvidia's opportunities to make money and the RX 9070 XT is gonna be great, allegedly. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, January 14th, 2025. Again, just a reminder, we currently have that PC giveaway going on over on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. It's for a Corsair Vengeance pre-built. You can check out the full video that we did of it right up there. In case you're interested in the entire spec list, we're gonna be drawing the winner for that next Friday, January 24th. Would love to have you there. And in fact, that is the exact same day that we're getting the reviews of the RTX 5090 and 5090D. NVIDIA confirming that the reviews would happen on that day for just the highest end card. But in case you want the reviews for the 5080, you're gonna have to wait until release date. They're only having the Founders Edition and AIB card reviews for the 5080 coming out on the 30th, which is the same exact day that these cards actually come out to retail, both the 5090 and the 5080 launching on that day. So in case you want reviews for the 5090, you're going to get those ahead of time. In case you want reviews for the 5080, you're gonna have to wait, which is strange because I feel like the 5080 is the card that people kind of need to see the reviews for, right? The 5090 is in this class where it is just the cream of the crop. It's for the people who have the most money to spend. They're less sensitive to reviews in, in my estimation of like, they don't need to know that it's that much better than the whatever's else on the market because they're going for the best. But the 5080 at that thousand dollar price point, then you're looking at like, oh, 4080 Super was costing that much, 7900 XTX is costing that much. There's already competitors in that price range. So I kind of need to know what exactly is going on there to understand whether or not I'm gonna buy it. So it's a, it's a bit weird that that is the separation that Nvidia is doing. I'm not sure that I like it, but I can't do anything to change it. We'll talk about, you know, leaked benchmarks that happen over the next week or so as this comes out to kind of get an indication of what the 5080 is going to be like. But uh, for the time being, that is how NVIDIA is doing it. And what we're doing today is sponsoring ourselves. We're not paying ourselves money, but in case you want to check out the brand new project from UFD, Reese and I have been working on something behind the scenes that we have launched UFD Music. As of January 1st, we have a new music channel that you can check out. We'll have it linked in the video description. Currently, we have a lo-fi album and a chiptunes album. We are working on other genres to come out. We're working with artists, not AI, in order to produce these. Reese got his degree in music production. A lot of people in UFD are very into music. Uh, we do stream, we use copyright free music, and so we wanted to kind of create something in-house that's actually uh, produced by us that we can use on our own streams and in our own content otherwise that we can also pass off to you guys. So feel free to use it in your YouTube videos. Feel free to use it in your Twitch streams. This is copyright free. In terms of us enforcing it and taking it down, we're trying to provide a service and if you want to subscribe, you want to check out these uh, these musics, you can do that. We'll have new albums coming in soon. I believe we should have another one ready this week. It probably won't be up on the YouTube channel this week, but the music should be done shortly. So in case you want to check out UFD Music, highly appreciate it. And I highly appreciate checking out the ARC B570 Battle Mage GPU because that's getting leaked benchmarks. And it turns out that it's right where we expect it to be. According to at least this synthetic benchmark, it is 12% slower than the ARC B580, and it is 12% cheaper than the ARC B580, and it has about 12% fewer cores, and you know, it just, it all kind of lines up that it's performing exactly where you would expect it to, the B570. But what you wouldn't have expected is that you could walk into a micro center right now and pick one up, because they're not supposed to come out till Thursday. You shouldn't be able to buy them right now. However, somebody over on Reddit allegedly said that they walked into micro Center and we were able to pick up two ASRock Challenger B570s. They can't find the B580 anywhere. Those are for sale at retail because they're being slopped up by everybody who wants them, but instead they were able to pick up two of these B570s. They're already being just uh, hoarded before they've even come out. That's a little frustrating, but I am excited for Intel's new graphics cards. Again, they are launching this coming Thursday. I personally am uh, starting a challenge where I am switching from an RTX 4090 in my gaming system over to an ARC B580, and I'm gonna use it for the remainder of the month for my gaming and streaming, and just kind of see uh, what life is like on the ARC uh, lifestyle. So um, I'll keep posted on that, how ARC B580 goes. We can't stop NVIDIA's monopoly unless, you know, we start uh, not using their cards, and it's gotta start somewhere, and I guess it's with me. And that's also kind of what's happening with neural rendering. It's gotta start somewhere, and Microsoft decides that's gonna start in DirectX, offering support for all of the different vendors, neural rendering, 
which allows you to do AI enhancements to things like textures, lighting, image upscaling, and it's now gonna be baked into the DirectX API, making it so that it should be easier for Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA, and Qualcomm to uh, put this into their systems and make it so that all those future sets are baked into video games and make things slightly easier for you to get all those fake delicious frames. And Reese has those fake delicious sales for you. They're not fake sales, it's just that money's made up, and so it technically it's all fake because, you know, we don't have to, it's a whole, you know, I'm just, this is a terrible segue and I had to roll with it. So go over to Reese now. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bring the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend and hey, we've got some deals for you today. Starting off with this GameStar Nova Lite wireless controller, going for only $18 and a very nice 69 cents, making it $7.30 off. But then next up, we have the always loved Creative Pebble 2.0 USB desktop speakers available in white for only $18.99, making them $6 off. And then lastly today, we have the Corsair IQ Link H115i. This 280 millimeter AIO CPU liquid cooler is going for only $79.99, making it $90 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, NVIDIA thinks they're getting a bum deal from the US government because in the waning days of the current administration, they have announced that they have new AI chip access restrictions that are gonna go into place for the rest of the world in terms of what US companies are allowed to export to various different countries. So it's gonna be based into three tiers. You have the tier one countries, which are essentially the United States allies. Then you have these tier two countries, which have restrictions, but not as heavy. And then you have restrictive access, which uh, limits the amount of graphics cards or AI chips very heavily. With the White House saying, in the wrong hands, powerful AI systems have the potential to exacerbate significant national security risks, including by enabling the development of weapons of mass destruction, supporting powerful offensive cyber operations, and aiding human rights abuse. So for first tier countries, there are no restrictions in how many GPUs or advanced computing chips can be sold. If you're a country in the second tier, that's 50,000 chips that they can get, but it could potentially be doubled up to 100,000 if they sign specific agreements with the United States. And then outside of that, it is much more restrictive where you're not gonna be able to really get them hardly at all. NVIDIA, obviously not liking this news, calling it a sweeping overreach, disagreeing with the United States government on it, essentially saying that it's misguided and that they're hiding behind 200 pages of legal morass to enforce something. That's not gonna help anybody besides uh, this vague sense of security theater is the general idea that's coming out from NVIDIA. Obviously, NVIDIA is going to oppose this. They have a financial vested interest in making sure that they can sell as many chips as possible and any legislation that uh, restricts that they will likely be opposed to. So, uh, you know, following the money there, of course, NVIDIA would be against it. And following the money for AMD, we uh, are hearing from their chief gaming marketing person uh, what to expect from the RX 9070 XD. And from their mouth, it is good things, very great things. The RX 9000 series is supposed to be very good, specifically in an interview with PC World saying that all of the benchmarks that we saw prior to CES were not accurate and that it should definitely be better. You will get better performance out of the car how much better? I'm not going to tell you. Also, in another interview, he indicated that while these chips won't cost $1,000, they also will not cost $300. That was kind of the range that he gave with regards to how much they cost. But we now got more leaks coming out over the weekend with exactly what performance we can be expecting as well as the price point. Again, take this all with a grain of salt. This is not official by AMD. They allegedly are gonna be giving us an extra event to talk more about these GPUs. I saw a couple uh, translations from a different interview saying that AMD intentionally withheld this because they knew NVIDIA would get the jump on them. I, I can't really find the substantiation for that, but AMD likely to come out with another event to talk more about these GPUs. But we are getting benchmarks for these coming out from Chip Hell, indicating that the RX 9070 XT is actually quite competent. So in Black Myth Wukong, which is a very heavy NVIDIA title, it nearly gets what the 4080 Super does in 4K, in 1440p, and in 1080p, and it beats out the 4070 Tissiper. Over in Cyberpunk 2017, it's not quite as good with the 9070 XT being more tied with the 4070 Tissiper. It kind of loses out in 4K, 2K, and 1080p, and the 4080 Super kind of being above all of them in that regard. But depending on the game between 4070 Tissiper and 4080 Super, seems to be quite competent. Getting a GPU that can give you 4080 Super level performance sounds reasonable as long as 
the price point makes sense, which we've got some details about that as well. Leaked pricing on this seems to indicate, according to another Chip Hell resource, that the AMD reference card should cost $479 and the AIB partner card should cost around $500. $149. So if we kind of compare that to what's currently out on the market, that means allegedly 4070 Ti Super to 4080 Super level performance at $480. Likely you're not going to find a lot of GPUs at that price point. So let's just say it's $550, the same price as the 5070. Now, if we kind of look at where Nvidia should land with the 5070, that should be around a 4070 Ti. So you're getting a 4070 Ti Super from AMD for $549, but you're getting a 4070 Ti from Nvidia at $549. Obviously, there's gonna be architectural differences, there's gonna be software advantages to either company. Nvidia obviously has NVENC advantages when it comes to streaming and various other encoding methods. AMD is supposed to have improved encoding on RDNA 4. So it does look like it's gonna be competitive from AMD, but it's not gonna be like a, a slam dunk home run win from them to be the no-brainer. If you're getting just slightly better performance, five to 10% at the same price point from AMD, I really don't think that's gonna be enough to move the entire general market share over to Team Red. It's gonna kind of be the same situation that we're in now where AMD does provide good value, but it, you're having a really hard time to convince people to switch away from Nvidia, which again is why I'm uh, working on switching over to Battle Mage to at least try to get off of the, the Team Green train. Uh, but while that pricing might seem too good to be true, we've already had leaked retailers list the price on the 9070 XT, and in a different country, it looks like it was $521 before tax, so that does kind of line up in that 480 to 550 price point that we're looking at for the 9070 XT. It seems good. We'll obviously have to wait for uh, AMD to talk more about this officially, see where the price point lies. I think if it was closer to 399, that would just be the absolute killer likely not gonna happen. And we don't know how long we're supposed to wait. Allegedly, according to that one posting by B&H, the, the cards were supposed to launch next week and towards the end of next week. I don't really see that happening, especially with AMD saying that they're gonna have an event. I, I don't I don't foresee that working out. It could, we could be getting these uh, good value cards before Nvidia even drops the reviews for their 50 series, but we'll have to wait and see on that. And you guys, wait, saw, and then responded to Friday's episode of Hot News. So let's see what you had to say in the comments, we got Perseus saying, we did the 90s to eliminate the Titan, now it's coming back. So essentially the product stack has been artificially shifted down a tier while maintaining the pricing of its old tiering. I've heard this, but it was never officially said by Nvidia that the 90s were the replacement for the Titan. It just kind of worked out that way. The 90s were called the BFG or big freaking GPU uh, when when they initially launched back with the, the 3090. And if you think back on that, the 1499 price point of the 3090 isn't that much more than the 1199 price point of the 2080 Ti. The RTX Titan launched for $2499, so we're still not at that price level. There's still room for that Titan class card. The 90 actually kind of comes in between the 80 Ti or 80 and the Titan. Pricing wise, it's not quite at where the Titan was. Uh, Titan Volta was also $24.99. Um, Titan XP and Titan X Pascal, those were a little bit cheaper, but again, the RTX 20 series kind of reset that with the 2080 Ti uh, being over $1,000. So I hear that, but it's also like, it doesn't line up exactly with where the pricing structure is now. And uh, Nvidia never said that directly either. They never said that the 90 was a Titan replacement. And then we got Mort saying, God, please don't let AMD let us down. They are my last hope. Sorry, brother. <laughs> AMD never misses a chance to let people down, especially on the GPU side. CPU side, they seem to be doing fine. APU side, doing great. Wanna, want Strix Halo for sure. Uh, console side, looks to be good. Uh, discrete graphics cards have always been a weird movement by AMD. Just can't explain it. Anyways, I'm not gonna explain anything more to you today. We'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, my friends. Goodbye.